how she was, uh, how can I say, just like an open end. I don't know if it'll allow me to do what I need to do. Yeah, they, in the beginning of the movie, they called her a witch, and they found out she was much more than a witch. Yeah. What that was is this. In this gatekeeper, they had called her a witch. And where I want to continue with this is this. She had a book, and that book is right there. And what they stated in the movie as well is that when they showed the emperor, they had him looking and they said, here's a language that he did not understand. And it was written in Sanskrit. And the thing is, is that we know that they was there. And they said they went to a library to retrieve this book. And it was in, they say, the greatest library in the East. And the greatest library in the East was the library in the land of Japhet. Japhet was one of the three so-called sons of Noah, so-called. Now. Here was written in Japheth in China, in ancient China, where they're talking about the Sanskrit. And this was something that the king himself or the emperor did not understand, and neither none of his mystics. So they asked about a witch, but she was not a witch. She was a gatekeeper. And in that, she held and understood the book something that was there that was not even mentioned to others who were high learned and scholars of many, many wonderful things. In this book, it held the secret of what we would say immortality. But it had, as we explained in the last class, how these things are. And we explained how Holder was one who was also there and that we have women in our area who are also gatekeepers. The thing is, this language that the king or the emperor did not understand, so does this exist in the ancient. The thing is, is that in these understanding of the structure, it eliminates all these other factors. What happened is, is that they began to take on something that was well hidden but not understood even once they discovered it. And these characters that have adapted from that became known as the ancient text. And it has a reference to that. That's what I wanted to show, that that was part of that condition. Now, outside of that, we go back to here, and we begin to look at um, How this structure is, is that when I talked about this and I told the brother that in the class that I would research this, and this is where you have this principal people, and this principal people, the Asa and Nayas, are also known as Hasanaya. Uh, they're also known as Hasanya, Hasani, uh, the Bedouin tribe. Um, these things are connected to all this area, and they were over in the land called Maratana. Maratana is where they have a structure that exists even today. And in the Western Sahara is where they're between the 15th and 17th century. And in this area, there was a certain Western dialect. And the Hassanayas were, they were descended from the North African uh, variants in certain areas of Arab, Arab tribes and sectors. And these individuals, in what we collected, what we call the Moors. Now, let's take a look at what we are with this sheet of paper, or with this one page here. Can I say something real quick? Sure. Because mm -hmm. um, I know an Arab there, he was coming to this last week, that's the name of the lady, he was speaking to Hassan Mia Valley. Uh -huh. He said he has a problem with that, because he said people like saying Western Sahara, he keeps saying, y'all are Moors, but he said they don't really know. He said people kind of like ours. Some of these people say they're from Tunisia, some of them say they're from here. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to find out. He said, you know, from the Hasaniya, he said, 
his family uh, name they call itself uh, Hassan Benil, and like the children of Hassan. Right. He don't know if they actually was not. Ben Nah Hassan Benil. But right. he said, uh, right. yeah, the uh, word Mauritania, like you're saying, he's from like the root for the word more. That's what that's they call a man that more in that way, he called a woman more rest. Right. Yeah, he's trying to find some things to ask him about the. Uh, but we're going to clear that up today. We're definitely going to clear that up today. That is a fact. Now, here's where we're going. The Hassanaya, as I was saying about the 17th and the 15th century, has almost completely been replaced by the Berber languages. In other words, the Berber language are the ones that are of the modern people here now. And they have replaced the ancient, because the ancient does not blend in as not compliance with the race that is con the, con the uh, controlling factor of the peoples who control the land. So therefore, the indigenous and the natural ancient language of the so-called Moors has been complex and not traceable to a point until now. The thing is, is that in this region, though clearly Western dialect, Asanaya is relatively distant from the northern variants, but the primary difference among them is the phonetics. Today, Hasanaya is spoken by the inhabitants. Now, I got this from a different dictionary, and one of the dictionaries I got it from, it's not even in print anymore. Um, in fact, it's a good dictionary because it also has the ancient in it, and it doesn't have a cover anymore. <laughs> But these are, these are the type of dictionaries that they're suppressing, and once they're gone, they're gone, and people who don't have some kind of structure of them, they'll be saying, hey, you're just fabricating them and you're making this up. No, we're not. This is actuality. This is where the information is. This is where they figured, hey, blacks wasn't reading, they put the truth in there. Now they're reading, they, what do you call it, revising things. Now, let's get to where we are. Now, here's what happened. This theme of the Hassanayas, or the so-called Moors, they have many different dialects, and the difference between them is the phonetic. Today, today, as we speak today, and as you spoke with your friend, Hassanaya is spoken by the inhabitants of Algeria, Morocco, and right here, Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Senegal, and the Western Sahara. Now, here is where and the antiquity that the Maritana was originally an independent Berber kingdom. Now there's a difference now. Hold on to your horses. Here is where in the Mediterranean coast they were named after the Mara tribe after whom the Moors were named corresponding to the Western Algerian, Northern Morocco, and Spanish Plaza de Sabarion. Now, the Moray people, Moray people, were indicated with the Greek word Morus, or Moros, meaning, hmm? Mavros. Mavros. Yeah. That's the Hellenistic Greek there, with the V, instead of the U. Okay, Mavros. Black, black. Before the flood of Noah, the antediluvian period, where the land was considered as one mass, all right, the modern Moors were known as, the H was not there. A lot of people were dealing with the A. That's why they sounds of the A's, the Ayin and the Alaf. The dictionary and everything else that I've researched give us the name Ayatha Amaya. Then when you look at the name, and we remember in Lincoln Heights, I asked the class to take two weeks, three weeks if you need to, and find the name of Ham. The name of Ham, as we found out through the Hebrew Union College, the other colleges across the country, and et cetera, we know that Ham really is Amaya. We know that. So the Moors were part of the structure of the so-called Ham. Now, here's the thing. In the Andalusian period, the Ayatha Amayas 
the so-called Moors, before they were given this name, Moors, 